Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to bring you along because I am going to be pressure canning meatloaf today. I have not done this before, so this will be a first for me. I've been doing a lot of research, watching a lot of videos on it. Meatloaf is a favorite meal of mine, and I would love to just have it on my shelf for long-term food storage whenever I want to pop up when I can, saute it up, and just have it for dinner. It'll be ready to go. A couple of things about meatloaf. It is not an approved recipe. Um, it's not on the National Center for Home Food Preservation website. You can can up. They tell you you can can up safely ground beef, but they want you to brown it first um, before you pressure can it which I have done. Um, I have ground beef, I have ground turkey on my shelves, and I cooked it first before pressure canning. But for this meatloaf recipe, I'm not going to cook it first. I'm going to raw pack it. So, according to my altitude where I'm at, um, my Presto pressure canner and cooker book recommends that I can at 13 pounds of pressure, and for a pint for ground meat, it recommends 75 minutes. But because I'm not cooking this first, I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 90 minutes and 15 pounds of pressure. It's just going to make me feel a little better just to have that extra processing time um, and pounds of pressure. This is a very favorite meatloaf recipe of mine. Um, my mom used to make growing up. She had a couple of different ones she'd kind of go back and forth between, but this is my favorite. So this is the one I'm going to show you today, and I will uh, put the recipe down in the description box below. I've already washed up my jars and my lids. They are ready to go. My pressure canner is ready with three quarts of water in the bottom. And everything is cold. My jars are cold. The pressure canner is cold. I haven't started it yet because I am raw packing. So I don't want to put cold product into hot jars or into a hot canner or, you know, vice versa. You never want to put a hot product into cold jars or a cold canner because then you can have breakage. So. With that being said, I'm going to bring you in close. I'm going to show you how I put together my meatloaf and we're going to pack it up in the jars and get going on the canning process. All right guys, so let's get to working on our meatloaf. So I have four pounds of ground beef in my bowl. Um, it's 80-20 and that's what I'm going to start out with. I have six pint-sized jars washed up and ready to go. Um, I'm not sure if I'll need more than that. If so, I'll get those washed and ready, but I'm starting out with six and we'll see where we're at from there. I did make my little glaze to go on top of my meatloaf. This is the same glaze I always use. It's got brown sugar, ketchup, and apple cider vinegar. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on top of each one after I pack it into the jar. And then over here, I do have my chopped up garlic and onion to go in. And like I said, I'm gonna have the recipe down below so you can kind of see the amounts to use. I am going to also include my Worcestershire sauce that I always put in mustard, parsley flakes. Parsley, in my opinion, is what really makes this recipe. It is so delicious. So I usually go pretty heavy on the parsley. Some thyme leaves. I've got ground black pepper some salt, and I actually believe that is everything. Now normally I would also add in um, some eggs, milk, breadcrumbs to help, like I said, bind that up, but I'm not gonna do that. Those are not considered safe items to can, so I'm not gonna add those into this recipe. So let's start adding in our ingredients. I'm going to add in all this onion. Now, I have started uh, grating my onion into my meatloaf when I make it on a normal basis. Um, I just feel like it, it just gives it that good flavor that I like in the onion, but you don't have big chunks. And you know, as I've moved around a lot, um, different ovens cook at different temperatures. So sometimes my onions don't feel like they're cooked long enough. And I just felt like it just really helps to grate it in so you don't have all of the chunks and maybe some of them are hard. Now, I am simply kind of eyeballing this. 
Um, I mean, even though the recipe is doubled, um, I just always eyeball everything. So the original recipe calls for two teaspoons. So I'm going to put roughly the equivalent of four teaspoons of mustard. And I think I put in about the equivalent of four tablespoons of the Worcestershire sauce. Now the original recipe calls for a third of a cup of parsley. So I'm going to do what I estimate to be two thirds. And my hands are clean. I did wash my hands thoroughly before I started cooking. We'll call that about a third. We'll call that about two thirds. A little more for good measure. I'm telling you the parsley makes this so, so good. And for the thyme, the original recipe calls for a teaspoon. So I'm gonna eyeball, actually, I really only think there's close to a couple teaspoons left in here. So I'm gonna put this whole thing in here and I need to get some more thyme. And then for the pepper, it calls for a half a teaspoon. So I'm gonna put about a full teaspoon of pepper. And for the salt, the recipe calls for a teaspoon. So we're gonna do about two teaspoons of salt. Okay, so that is everything for my meatloaf. So now I'm just gonna start mixing this up by hand. Should've bought some gloves, but oh well. I'm gonna mix this up by hand and then we will go to the next step together. It's actually something really satisfying to me about getting your hands in here and mixing it up. I think it's just that I'm so excited to be making meatloaf. <laughs> and as part of my longer term food storage, I like to pressure can items. Um, they last, there's different variations on that of what's considered. Some, uh, probably the National Center for Home Food Preservation tells you they last for about a year or so. Um, and other people say up to three years, some people say up to five years, and some people say they will last as long as they are stored properly. So it is a long-term food storage item. And right now I've really been putting my focus on canning, pressure canning my own meats and soups. I don't have a ton of space here um, where I'm living right now uh, at an apartment. So. I can't pressure can or water bath can everything that I would really like to be canning. I love to can a bunch of different stuff, but right now I'm really focusing on the main things that I wanna have on hand, um, which is meat and soups. Meat, of course the prices are going up on everything, but especially on meat. And I do occasionally buy um, canned meat from the store. You know, that will last a long time too, but there's nothing like having your own freshly canned product that you know exactly what you put into it and the flavor in my opinion you can't beat. Okay so now that we have all of our meat mixed up thoroughly together here I'm going to start raw packing this into the jars. Now don't do what I did and do this in regular mouth jars. Honestly it'll be a lot easier if you can do wide mouth jars but I only have the regular mouth jars on hand right now so that's what I'm going to use. And I just wanted to do the, the pint size jars um, because unless I'm like having company over, a quart size is really going to be too much. So I think a pint size will be perfect. And my canning funnel seems to have gone MIA for some reason. So I'll just try to drop this in here as best I can without making a huge, huge mess. And I'm not going to fill it up past the one inch head space. Whenever you're pressure canning meat, you don't go past the one inch head space. Okay guys, so I actually only got five quarts excuse me, five pints out of that four pounds of meatloaf. Um, there's actually a little bit of meatloaf left mixture, maybe about for a half a pint, but I think I'll just cook it up. 
<laughs> we'll just do something with it and cook it up. So, uh, surprising. I thought I would at least get six, but oh well. So, I'm going to pour in my leftover vinegar that I had. The vinegar is just going to help um, minerals not to build up on your jar lids. And it's okay if you don't do this. If you do get mineral buildup on your jars, you can it comes off. You just wash it off. But um, So I have this in my cold pressure canner. And you can see I've got my rack on the bottom. Don't ever put jars down in your pressure canner without a rack because they will break. So I'm going to put my lid on. And I'm going to very slowly start bringing this up to pressure. That's You'll get siphoning where your liquid really siphons out of your jars when you try to bring this up to pressure too quickly. So I'm slowly going to bring this up and um, I have to vent it first for 10 minutes. So when the steam starts coming out of the vent, I need to let that steam come out for 10 minutes and then start bringing it up to pressure. 15 pounds of pressure is what I'm going to do for 90 minutes. So I will bring you back when this is done and I'm ready to take these out and I will show you what we have. All right, you guys, our timer has gone off. I did let this process uh, 90 minutes at 15 pounds of pressure and let's I've been letting I already um, once the gauge came down completely to zero then I took off the knob that was you know pressurized the canner and I've this has actually been sitting for quite a while because I had other things to do but now I'm gonna completely take the lid off and hope that nothing oh, looks good so now I am going to start taking the jars out. Let me see what we've got here. All right, can you see that? Still boiling in the jars. Of course, a lot of fat in there, which there usually is with meatloaf. It is, it is what it is. Okay, so I am going to get the rest of these out. And so far, I am pleased and I really took my time bringing this up to temperature as well as bringing it back down. There is like, I hardly see any kind of siphoning. The water is still very clear, maybe just a touch of siphoning, but hardly any. And the last one. So, we are just going to let these sit and cool. Now, I will check these tonight before I go to bed to make sure that they've all sealed. It actually looks like they have already all sealed from what I can see, but I'm not going to touch these yet because they're still extremely hot, still boiling. So, let these cool down completely. Tonight before I go to bed, I will touch them, press down, make sure they're all sealed. If something did not seal, I'll put that in the refrigerator because you don't want to leave that sitting out all night if it's not sealed. But I'm excited. These look really good to me. Um, and I'll have to bring you back here soon in another video. And we're going to taste test one of these and see how uh, it, it turns out, how it really tastes and the texture and all of that. So we'll do a video that we go through all of that as well. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me today as I canned meatloaf for the first time. Really excited to try this. It smells amazing in here. Of course, every time you pressure can, you know, it just smells so good. But... I may tweak the recipe just depending on what I think. I don't know if I need to add any liquid. Um, I think it'll be very moist, but um, if I need to, I'll tweak, tweak the recipe in the future. But if you like these types of videos, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Share my videos with other people that you think might like them. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.